study these messages on prayer, these verses on prayer, is in Acts chapter number 4 and in verse number 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Uh, when they had prayed, everything that we do as believers should be centered around prayer. And uh, how many of you feel like you ought to pray more? How many of you have been praying more since we've been talking about this? Most everybody. Now, friend, I, I think, I think we'll, as a believer, when we really see the need of prayer is when we will be praying more, when we see the need of prayer. Now, prayer is something that is hard on the old flesh. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's, that's, one of those, that's one of those things that is hard on the old flesh because this old nature does not want that to happen. This old nature does not want our spiritual man to pray. And how many times do you get down to pray or you start to pray and along comes 15 other things that you think about that you could be doing? Amen? Amen? And you might not have thought of those things all day long, but the moment you start to pray, you'll think, well, I left this laying there. I left that laying over there. I should have went and done this today. And you're trying to pray, and that's because the devil don't want you praying. The Spirit's willing. You want to do it. And, I, and it, it's, it's taken me some time to realize that if I, you know, if I begin to pray, and if I pray till the devil goes away, then I have, you know, God hears me. God hears everything that I'm saying if I'm praying without uh, something between me and him. God hears every word I'm saying as long as it's a clean line open between me and God. What does that mean? It means that I have no sin in my life, that I've confessed my sin, and it means I ain't mad at you. Amen. Amen? And I ain't mad at nobody. And that's one thing keeps me from getting mad at people is because if I'm mad at you for whatever reason, uh, who got me the cat? Well, you don't have to tell me who got me the Cadbury eggs, but I'm real happy with that person tonight. Amen. I get Cadbury eggs, and I know, don't go telling me something come along and lay them Cadbury eggs, because I know. But yeah, I, I don't, don't get, but anyway. Uh, but if, you know, if, if, I get angry with somebody over something, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that would make me angry. That's bad. That's pretty good when you have to stop and think about something what some of you can do to make me angry, isn't it? I don't have to have to do that. What's that? Oh, yeah. Well, okay, I'll use that. That's 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 one of my biggest weaknesses. I'm working on that, but just not real hard. I'm afraid sometimes. Uh, but and and that, and fellas, that illustration I used about the church and that guy uh, getting into it with another guy in road rage, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I, I just, want to, just want you to know that. I was telling them about, uh, you know, about uh, road rage. We'll get, we're, I, this will go somewhere, so I'm not just running rabbit here. Uh, and this fellow, he got angry with somebody else in the car beside him, and I don't know what, I don't remember the details. They rode his bumper or, uh, you know, I think he's riding his bumper, but anyway, he got beside him or pulled over or something. Guy passed him on the wrong side of the road or something, and, and they had words between them as they drove by. And so he rode his bumper for a while, and it all got, you know, all got to be a mess, and they was uh, both on their way to the same church. <laughs> neither one of them knew that. It was a big church, and neither one of them knew that they was going to the same church. And it was a shock when he walked in, and there sat the fellow that, and when they seen each other, he said they just looked and glared. I thought, boy, that's one way to have a church service, ain't it? Amen. Now, neither one of them could pray till that thing was made right. That's what I was, that's what I was getting at. So if Thelma's driving down the road and, I'm, and uh, I'm in front of her and she goes to riding my bumper and blowing my horn, she's going to get windshield wipe for fluid all over her car. That's one thing that will make people get back, you know, a little bit. Well, I, you might do it. Then I will, will be mad. But now, if I, if, 
you know, that we, we, we jest and we talk like that. But if it was a matter of that, and, and I got angry with somebody over something simple, did you know I cannot pray until I make that thing right? Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you there's been times uh, in my life when I have went home, maybe after a service, maybe I talked to somebody after a service, and, and I got to thinking about something I said that might have came off wrong. And I went home miserable and called that person up and apologized to them. You know why? Most time there was no need for it. But I thought that I had done I don't. I want to keep things clear between me and God. And if it's not clear, if everything's not right between me and my brothers and sisters in Christ, it cannot be right with the Lord. Therefore, if it's not right with you and I, yeah, there's people that harbor uh, ill feelings against other Christians the, their whole life. Do you know they can never pray? They can never pray, can never get a prayer answer as long is that broken fellowship because if you break fellowship with the brethren then you break fellowship with God now does that mean you're lost no that means you just ain't in fellowship and uh, it's it's like with me and my daddy me and my daddy get along good we're close and we don't have ill feelings against one another uh, my daddy is one of the strongest men yet one of the most gentle men that I've ever met uh, he's He's uh, meek, but he's not weak. And me and my daddy get along well. But did you know something? If something came between me and my daddy and I didn't make it right, then I could, I'd still be his son. They couldn't change that. I'd still be his son, but I wouldn't have fellowship with him. If something comes between me and my father, if I sin and it comes between me and my father, he's still my father, but I can't communicate with him. And so I believe these people, when they had all prayed, they prayed because they could get through to heaven. They prayed because they knew God would listen to them. They prayed because they needed the help of God. At the onset of the New Testament church, it was founded in prayer. Friend, how much more, as the church began, how much more do we need prayer in our churches now? Uh, I'm trying to think. There is a book, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. Have any of you read that book? It's by the pastor of the Brooklyn Tabernacle, Jim Cimbala of the Brooklyn Taber Ta Tabernacle in New York City. Now, I don't know what you might think of him. Some of his ways are a little odd to me. And he's not a Baptist to say the least. But I'm telling you, the man knew something about prayer when he wrote the book. And he's got several. Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire is the one that, that is a book on prayer. And if you can read that, it'll help you. Uh, if you can, I think I've got a copy. I'll, if I have, I'll bring it. If you want to pass it around and read it, it'll help you. It's helped me. But it's a book on prayer. If we'll pray, God will do things. Now, I don't agree with everything in the book he wrote, but I, did, I do understand this. If we'll pray, God will hear our prayers and God will do things. How many of you like to see these pews filled on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday? Now, I'll tell you what it's going to take to do that. It'll take a couple of things, but the one most important thing, it'll take you and I praying that God will help Christians to see the need of being faithful to the house of God, not just Sunday morning, but Sunday night and Wednesday. Amen. Now, that ain't too popular sometimes, but it's it's just the way it you know it's just the way it is. I know thing I know there's things that prevent people from uh, from coming to church on Sunday night and Wednesday. I know that jobs prevent it, sickness prevent it. There's a lot of things that prevent it, but there's a lot of things uh, that if I if if I did what I wanted to do sometimes, then I wouldn't come to church. Now you get that? Now I'm your preacher, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you, if I did sometimes what this old flesh wants to do, I wouldn't come to church. But I'm not to please the flesh. I'm to, and there's never been a time that I've come to church, even if I didn't really feel like I could go, that I didn't leave feeling better. That's what church is about. That's what the family of church members is about. And if we as church members will pray, then we will see God work. If we as, as a group of believers tonight here will saturate 
our lives with prayer and will pray for our church, that will accomplish more than anything else we can do as a church. That will accomplish more than all the, all the programs that we can muster up or all the activities that we can muster up, all the special meetings that we might have to get people in. If we'll pray, God will work and God will do something for us. And I believe that with all my heart. I believe, it to, I believe church is a matter of prayer. I believe, now there's been some praying going on since I've been here. I know there has. I know people have been praying for the church. I know people have been praying for me. And I'm not about to let you, ask you to let up on praying for me. Pray harder. I'll preach myself to death and you can get another pastor. Amen. That's what somebody said. They said, they said if you ever want to get rid of me as a pastor, just, just pray for me. That I, and he said, I'll preach myself to death. And then you get you another preacher. Let another one. Hey, just pray for, the, you know, just pray for me. I beg you pray. I beg you pray that you pray for me. Pray for me that I'll pray. If you ain't got nothing else, pray for me about pray. Say, Lord, help, help the preacher to pray. And I'll pray for you. That is, prayer is the, I, I, I honestly believe that that's the most important thing in the growth of a church is to have a prayer life and to be known as a house of prayer, as a church of prayer. They found in the upper, or when they were praying in, uh, here in the book of Acts, they found that when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. Listen, that's what God will do. When we pray, he will shake the house. And friend, I, I'm looking for God to shake the house. Now, I, I have watched some other churches along the way. Our church is, is growing. That is something that, doesn't, that isn't happening a lot today. I hear of more churches that go the opposite direction from what we're doing. But friend, it's God. We're praying and God's going to bless and God's going to bless more. Amen. Uh, are you agree with me or you think I'm lost my mind? Nod your head if you agree with me. All right, okay. Now, we study prayer and we talk about praying. But if we see something and we don't do it, then, you know, uh, it's just like you know. It's just like going our own way and saying, "Yeah, you need help," and then walking your own way. It's like like we was talking about in in the book of James tonight. If you see somebody that has a need, and you're outside your door saying how cold they are and how hungry they are, and you just look at them and say, "Well, may God bless you, Lord, help you," and shut your door in their face, you've not done much good, have you? You got to help them. And the same way with our prayer life. If we say, "Lord, we need to pray," and we know we need to pray then it makes us that much more guilty when we don't pray if we know that we should. So I'm urging you tonight to pray. And that's why we went over all these verses of prayer. Christ prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, but that was not the only time he prayed there. I believe he prayed there often. I believe that was one of his choice places of prayer. It was around those olive trees uh, there in the Garden of Gethsemane. And that is a... That is a wonderful place to be. If you ever, ever get an opportunity to go over there, and then that's one place you want to make sure you go whether you go anywhere else is the Garden of Gethsemane. It's not all what you picture in your mind, but it's full of uh, big olive trees, one that is fenced off and you can't get to it because people, people would tear it down. They would take pieces of it, and, and, uh, and so they had to fence it off because uh, it is certain that that tree is over 2,000 years old, and it was uh, there when Christ prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed. And how much more, as I said this morning, how much more important is it, us for us, is it for us to pray if it was that important for Christ to pray? And he was God in the flesh. But yet he saw the need to pray and talk to the Heavenly Father. And that's what prayer is. Prayer is not a bunch of, of eloquent words. We're talking, we talk to God, we talk to him as we would talk to our we converse with him because he has a listening ear. Now he speaks to us through his word and through that still small voice on the inside. But when we talk to God, we don't have to have a lot of big words to say. We just need to have a conversation with the Lord and sit down and talk to him. Lord, I've had a rough day. And God, I know that you're able to help me. I know that you're God. I know... You know, maybe you're outside and you're looking. I do. I, I'm outside sometimes and I look up at the stars and say, God, I know you made every one of them. 
I know you made it. I know you put all of them up there. And Lord, I know and I realize how little I am, but God, I, I had a rough day today and I need your help. And Lord, I, I, I got to go tomorrow and I may have a rough day tomorrow. And God, I, I need your help. And Lord, I've got a neighbor that needs your help. And Lord, I love you and I'm glad that you can, can help me. I'm glad you can help my neighbor. I'm glad you can help my church. I got a church that's, that's, that's uh, getting fired up for the Lord. Lord, I pray that you bless our church. And you just talk to them. See, we've got the idea that, you know, we've heard people pray, and I, I know, you know, I, I prayed prayers that didn't get anywhere, I'm sure, because I was, you know, I, something was wrong. But I, I've, heard, I've heard and seen people pray and have it all written down, what they were saying. A lot of great, swelling, eloquent words, but it wasn't worth anything because it was just an offering. It wasn't worth anything because it was to please men rather than to please God. When you get out to pray and you, you don't care if anybody else around here, you're not. You get to talking to God and it's a one-sided conversation between you and Him. Amen? No matter if you're in a crowd or no matter if you're all alone by yourself. If you're talking to the Lord, it's a one-sided conversation. All men can hear is what you're telling the Lord. They can't, they can't be on the other side listening to what God's listening to. But yet I can be praying. Sister Carolyn back there can be praying. Hey, and... Uh, uh, Sister Ashley can be praying. Sister Thelma, we can all be praying at the same time for entirely different things. And God hears us each individually. Boy, I've got a God, don't I? I can't listen to two people at one time. He drives me nuts. Try to listen to two people tell me something at one time. Wait a minute. One at a time here. Because I can't listen to two people at once. But God can listen to millions talking to him at the same time. That's the kind, you say, there ain't nobody can do that. Nobody can, but God can because he's God. Let's look up a couple of verses of Scripture and then we'll go to how. Uh, on my right, someone look up 1 Kings chapter number 8 in verse number 54. In the middle here, someone look up 2 Chronicles 7 in verse 1. And then on my left, someone look up Daniel chapter number 6 and verse number 11. Whoever gets 1 Kings 8, 54 first, go ahead and read that. Now, that is a position of prayer. Solomon was praying. He was praying on his knees. He was praying with his hands lifted to the air and he was praying and acknowledging God. Now, do I believe that you must be on your knees to talk to the Lord? I don't believe that. Do I believe that that honors God to do that? Yes, I do. But many times we're not, we're not of the place or the condition even to be on our knees. But my mama can't. She can't get on her knees. She used to. I've seen her. But my mama cannot no longer get on her knees to pray, but she sits there in the, in the chair and she prays. Do I believe that's being prayed? Yes, I do. Should we, Solomon had made an end to praying and he had prayed to the Lord of heaven, he had prayed to God. It is not the position of the body, it's the condition of the heart that allows us to talk to the Father. And friend, when we have opportunity, men, if you're out somewhere and ain't nobody else around you, won't do us a bit of harm once in a while. Just get on our knees and lift our hands toward heaven and pray and ask God's help. Whether you're out in the barn, out in the woods, out in the woodshed, or beside your bed at the house, it don't do, don't do a thing wrong to have your altar and lift your hands to the Lord praying. So Solomon prayed. He was praying with all prayer. Now that speaks volume. That's Old Testament, of course, but that speaks volume of praying with all prayer. And friend, you can pray, you can, you can be specific in your prayers, you can be general in your prayers, but we need to pray, we need to talk to the Lord. He, he, it pleases Him to have fellowship with us and to listen to our voice. Now, I don't know why God wants to listen to such as I. I don't know why the Lord wants to listen to me, but He does. 
And I, I believe that he waits on us to call upon him. And I believe it disappoints the Lord when we don't call upon him, when we don't pray. Lord, help me not to be a disappointment to God. Lord, help me not to be a disappointment in my prayer life that I might call upon the name of the Lord and bless him. Now, not all the time when we pray with all prayer, not all the time should it be a prayer of I want this or I want that. Sometimes we ought to just stop to pray and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Try it sometime. Try and get on your knees before God, calling out to God and say, Lord, I don't want to ask you for one thing. I just want to thank you. You'll find yourself having a spell too. Because while you're praying, God's listening, and it reminds you of all the good things that God has done for you, you'll forget about asking for anything to start with because you'll, you'll, you'll pray and you will remember how big God is, how little you are, and how insignificant we are, yet how much God loves you, how much he loves me. I, I, I think of that. And you begin, to, you begin to think on those things while you're praying, and the Lord will bless you if you just pray sometimes and say, Lord, I don't ask for anything. I just want to thank you and I just want to praise you and begin to pray and call out to God. Who has 1 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 1? I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 1. Read that once again, please. When, God, when Solomon had ended praying, what happened? When Solomon had ended his praying, things began to happen. Now, I believe Solomon was, was expecting something to happen. Do we often pray and not expect anything to happen? I often pray and not expect anything to happen. We ought to pray expecting God to do something. We ought to pray expecting the fire to fall from heaven. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fire, the power of God, the fire of the Spirit of God upon our lives and upon our church services. Pray. Listen, it, it got good. I don't know if I'm the only one in the building that enjoyed church this morning, but if I am, I appreciate God. I appreciate the fire of God falling and helping me. And I get a glimpse. Listen, if you can't get a glimpse of the cross and what Jesus did for you, amen, you need fire. Your wood's wet. And you need the fire to fall from heaven and show you. Solomon, when it ended praying, fire fell, consumed the offering. Listen, if you want God to do something, pray expecting God to do something. I, I've prayed before now. Say it ain't going nothing going to happen. Sometimes, in spite of myself, I prayed that, and God still do something. But we pray, expecting the Lord to do something in our lives. And friend, the the power of God will fall. The power of God will move. I asked God this morning. I said, God, do something special. And I've asked him, God, do something special with this church. I'm not listening. I'm not here. I'm not here as your pastor just to just to preach to you on Sunday. I, I'm here expecting God to do great and wonderful things here at Gables Creek. I expect that. God, do it, please. And I expect it will most likely happen when we all begin to pray, when we all get under that burden for the church and we pray, Lord, help the church. Look what God will do. I believe fire fall from heaven. I believe the power of God will move on us if we'll pray. All right, who's got Daniel chapter 6 and verse 11? found Daniel praying, making supplication to the Lord. He was making his supplication, he was making his request, and they found him praying. When's the, when's the last time you've been found praying? Oh, my. Well, that hurts, don't it, when you think about it. When's the last time you have been found praying and calling out to the Lord? God, help us that we would increase our prayer life where somebody might know that we're praying 
Christians. Now, I know praying Christians in my life. I know, I know there's praying Christians that, that pray for me. And I, I know people that, I, I've got a grandmother, I believe her prayers are still being answered that, that she prayed for me. And she's been dead and gone for a while. But I believe her prayers, I believe her prayers are still being answered because she called me out to the Lord in prayer. I heard her, heard her pray. Listen to her pray. Listen to her call out to God. And friend, if we'll pray, and we're found to be have a prayer life, I believe it would be so much important. Daniel, Daniel, you, you know, he had it pretty rough, didn't he? Now, Daniel prayed. He was, he was to be thrown to the den of lions where there was real animals ready there to scarf him up. We said, well, I guess he did pray. No, Daniel was praying long before that. That's what got him in trouble to start with was praying. But you just do what the Lord expects you to do and what the Lord, what, I'll do what the Lord expects me to do in my prayer life and God will, people will notice. Oh, they may not catch you on your knees praying, but they'll know that you've been with the Lord and they'll know that you, <clears throat> you're praying and talking to God. Pray. Pray. Be a person of prayer. Uh, someone on this side, look up Luke chapter number 11. We'll do uh, these three and then we'll be gone. Luke chapter number 11 in the middle, Ephesians 6, 18, and Jude chapter number 1 and verse 20 on my right. Luke chapter 11, 1, Ephesians 6, 18, and Jude 1, 20. Whoever gets Luke 11, 1, go ahead and read that. Now, he, this was Christ. He was, he was Saul praying. And he was Saul how that, you know, he, he was seen being in prayer. And they want to know, Lord, teach us to pray. Now we have the Word of God. There is book after, you go to the bookstore, you go to the Christian bookstore, and you'll see, you'll see many books written on prayer. But the thing we have to do in order to be taught to pray is just to pray. Now there's the model prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's a model prayer. And there's nothing wrong with praying that prayer. But for you and I to be taught to pray, we just got to understand we need to pray. As, a, as a, 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 a preacher, and he was going to write a book on prayer. He, he thought he could write a book on prayer because he had prayed. So he said he got all his books, you know, his study books together that he had, all his, his, his books on prayer that he had, and all the commentaries he had on prayer. And he said, he, he said I'm going to go down here in this pine thicket, and I'm going to get out on my face, and I'm going to write a book on prayer. And he said he got down there and he began to ask God and talk to God about writing a book on prayer. And he said just as plain as day, he said the only words he could think to write in the book was just pray. Now, we can, we can, there's all kinds of books you can read on prayer. And I'm not opposed to that. If it'll encourage you and help you, amen, help yourself. I read that book, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, and it encouraged me in my prayer life. And I'll encourage you to read it, to find that book and, and read it. But I'm going to tell you something. If we're taught to pray, we'll just learn that we just need to pray and just talk to the Lord. Now, we taught our children to talk. We taught them to speak. And in the Word of God, we learn how to pray. We, we petition God. He says we have not because we ask not. So we need to ask the Lord for things. And we need to pray not that we consume uh, not, to, not for things that we can consume upon our own lust, but pray godly things that will help us and that will help others when we request. You have not because you ask not. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. That's part of your prayer life. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. Okay, who has Ephesians 6, 18? Someone read that. There you go. From Lord teach us to pray to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 to being taught of prayer. 
Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Now, we're to pray. We're to be prayerful people. Now, there's nothing weird about praying. There's nothing strange about praying to God. And so we should be prayerful people, praying always. In other words, as, a, as opportunity arises, uh, we should ask the Lord for His help. I work some, sometimes I'm working and, and people think I'm talking to myself. And I'm looking at Sister Ashley back there because she commented a time or two wondering who I was talking to. Well, chances are real good I was either talking to myself, sure enough, or chances are also real good that I was conversing with the Lord. And, I, and I, you know, I'll have, Lord, why, now why did that happen, Lord? Something might come along and, and upset me, and I, Lord, now why did that happen? And, I, and that's the way, I, and I move my lips, and I'm talking under my breath, and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we should be always where we can pray and talk to the Lord. Praying always. Help, Lord. I, I use that so many times in my daily life. Help, Lord. But why? Because I need the help of God. And I find that, that I'm able to do that. And that is part of, I believe, part of being always in prayer is being able to converse with the Lord at any time when you need Him, when you, you know, or, or when you just want to uh, thank Him for something. You know, I, you know, I've kind of, I've had close calls in the car, or, or even at work, or out hunting. I, I fell out of a tree this past hunting season. Did I tell you all about that? Some of you did. Or somebody. Well, I was, I killed a deer, and I was in a tree stand I hadn't hunted for. It wasn't about high as those speakers right there. That's how high it was up in the tree. And uh, everybody in the world knows that you don't come down a ladder front way. Everybody knows that. I know that. I killed that deer, and I started out of that tree, and I thought, ah, it's leaning out pretty good. I said, let's walk down there. I take two steps, and the next thing I know, I'm flat on the ground. And I said, help, Lord. And I, I, I laid there just a second, and there wasn't nothing hurting, and I got up. First thing I thought of was, did I break my gun scope, in which I did. But you know, in just a moment of time, that could have been a tragic, tragic thing for me. And after I'd done that, I thought, how foolish was that? And wasn't God looking out for me? I mean, God was looking out for me, and I said, Lord, thank you I didn't get hurt. And that's what I said, Lord, thank you I didn't get hurt. And, uh, and, and no worse for the way, I wasn't, even, I wasn't even much sore the next day. But guess what? I learned something from that experience. I will never, ever walk down a ladder frontwards again. Now, the Lord might have taught me that because next time I tried it, I may have failed and broke something bad. If I'd have got by with it that time, I might have tried. You know, we got a lot of trees standing. Some of them were a lot higher than that, and I might have tried that again and fell out of there frontwards and got killed. But we, we need to learn to be able to pray and to call upon the Lord. And I say, Lord, help me today. Lord, uh, protect me today. Lord, don't let me get hurt today. And I pray those things. And sometimes I'll do something foolish like that. And that was foolish. That was a dumb thing to do. I've done dumb things. But that was a dumb thing to do. But God, God even in my stupidity, in my ignorance, God still helped me. And God will. We just need to learn to lean on Him. We need to learn to trust God. And we need to learn to pray always with all prayer and supplication. Let our requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. All right, the last verse, Jude chapter, Jude chapter 1 and verse number 20. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Spirit. Now, friend, that's how we ought to pray. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit of God. And listen, we can't pray in the Spirit of the flesh. That never, that's what never gets out, out of the room that we're in or above the trees over our head is when we're praying in the flesh. But when you pray in the Spirit, God hears you. You say, how do I know if I'm praying in the Spirit? Man, if you get down and talk to the Lord, and you know, you'll know God's hearing you. Now, sometimes... God will be here and you still won't think he is because, uh, you know, but, but you check up. Lord, there's nothing between me and you. I 
I'm not mad at nobody. Mm-hmm. Nothing between my and my brother and sister. That's when faith kicks in and you pray by faith. You pray in the Spirit knowing that God's hearing you and you pray by faith. And even though you may not feel like your prayers are being heard, if you're praying, nothing's wrong, you're praying by faith knowing God's hearing you. Now, listen, there's been times when I, I prayed and I thought, man, that didn't go anywhere. But I check up knowing that everything's all right between me and the Lord. God's heard my prayer, and God will answer my prayer. The answer is on the way if we pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God tonight. Blessed, I pray. God, help us to pray. God, remind us to pray. Lord, this old flesh is weak. The Spirit's willing, but this old flesh is weak. And I pray, God, you'd rebuke the old flesh, and God, help us to see the need of prayer, to call upon thee. Lord, let us find our secret place. Lord, that you might bless us here at the house of the Lord and that you might bless our lives as we go every day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you. for.